Hey guys, I have an interesting little chip to show you today. Unfortunately, it is not an audio amplifier chip. Boo! You suck. Eh, sorry. Maybe in the next video. But I think you might find this interesting if you play around with the little microcontroller chips like the uh, pick chips, such as a pickaxe. There's the Arduinos. Even the little tiny microcomputers such as the Raspberry Pi. Well, the outputs of those chips you can use to drive LEDs and things. Problem is, there's just not enough current or voltage to drive some motors, actuators, or relays. Even power LEDs you might want to operate with the microcontroller. But what you need is some way to amplify the power or the current coming out of those outputs and you can do that with transistors and MOSFETs and things but I think this here is a neat solution what it is it's an LN2803A it's an Darlington driver array there's eight drivers on one chip here in this 18-pin uh, dual inline package. Well, let's look at some of the specs of this IC. Like I say, it has eight Darlington driver arrays. Each output can sync 500 milliamps of current and handle up to 50 volts max. So that makes it easy to interface your projects with the real world. You can also combine outputs together for more current. Now let's say for example you have a 24 volt 1.2 amp motor. Well you want to get three channels together so you have 1.5 amps and that gives you a little bit of headroom. So just combine three of the inputs together and tie three of the outputs together giving you a maximum current of 1.5 amps and there you go, no problem handling that motor. I should mention though that the total chip current budget is 2.5 amps. So you can't run all outputs sinking 500 milliamps because you'll exceed that. So you have to analyze your circuit and make sure the sum of all the currents in all eight arrays is not exceeding 2.5 amps. Also has built-in clamp diodes so if you're driving something with a coil like a relay you know because of the inductive reactance when current shuts off it makes a high voltage spike which can damage the transistors. Well inside are the clamp diodes on each output which protects the um, the output transistors from damage. Also there's a base resistor on each input so you don't have to worry about limiting current through the junctions, the uh, base emitter junctions inside the transistors. And they're not that expensive. On DigiKey I see they want 72 cents each. So you know it's a pretty inexpensive solution. Okay let's take a look at the data sheet. Here is the data sheet. That's the output showing the clamp diodes. They show as inverting buffers and I'll explain that in a minute. And there is the actual chip layout. Pin 10 must be connected to the supply so that the clamp diodes are in the circuit. You may not use them, but it's good practice to have it connected anyway. And some curves and things. And um, let's see. Trying to find the. Oh, here it is. This is the actual Darlington circuit they're using. Okay, have the chip set up on the breadboard. 
And what I'll do, I'll feed some current through an LED to the input, and we'll drive this incandescent bulb that's on the output. So a 6 volt, 100 milliamp bulb. And there'll only be uh, 1 or 2 milliamps going in. That's a highly efficient LED, so it'll light up. So you can see a small amount of current controls a much bigger current there. And now to explain why this is called a, well, it was shown as an inverting buffer in the data sheet. And the reason that is an open collector type logic, you use a pull-up resistor. So when the transistor is off, it brings the output high. In other words, if the input is low, the output is high. So I have the input tied to ground which is low and the output is on so it's opposite or inverting so if I make the input high the output goes low the LED goes off and you really wouldn't want to use this as a logic gate because it's meant to be a driver but that's just kind of an explanation on this jumble of wires this is a pickaxe chip driving this low powered RGB LED I soldered legs on it so I can plug, plug it into my board. This model of LED was actually used in the Jumbotron at Michigan Stadium and I think it's at that big screen in one of the end zones. And I found the model number and all that good stuff and that's how I know. But it's a Cree RGB LED. But what I'm, what I'm doing is taking the outputs from the chip and also bringing it over to the inputs of the ULN2803. Then the outputs go to current limiting resistors and it drives this power RGB LED. Just as a demonstration here. So if I turn this on, it lights up red and then it just flips through the colors. I just have a for next type statement, um, you know, let whatever equal one to seven, then it loops through, send the output to the pins, the output pins, and it just flips through the colors. Changes every 20 seconds or so. And of course, because this chip can only drive a small LED, I'm using this array driver here to drive the power LED, which is, of course, it's much brighter. And that's just one example of how you can use this IC. Well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Yeah! yeah. Right. Dude, you rock! There you go. Well, maybe I'll do an audio chip in the next video. That's it. Thanks for watching.